Hey friends, today, in addition to an all aquarium update in honor of February, I'm also going to include an update on products that I liked and products I didn't like after using for a long period of time. That's all coming up right after this. Hey YouTube, this is Peck Tech, and thank you for coming back once again for another video. I've got a bunch of tanks to show you, so I'm gonna jump right into that now. We might as well start with a new tank. It's the 210, and uh, all the fish are doing really well. The plants seem to be doing pretty good, considering I haven't added CO2 yet, and I haven't done, uh, I've got another sump project that I really need to get done for this thing. Uh, I'm gonna revisit this again soon. I kind of stepped away from it from a little bit because I'd been talking about it for a little over a month straight and I kind of wanted to mix things up on the channel and show you some other stuff so you didn't get too bored. I did add this Bristlenose Placo, which hopefully will work out fine. I need to keep an eye on them though because sometimes, sometimes the Bichers and these guys uh, have problems when they're housed together. Uh, 50 Centipoma is doing really good. I was worried for a little while because he kind of stopped eating for a little bit. But uh, that all went away, and the uh, the rainbows are doing good. Uh, both of them are looking great. Of course, this guy is doing what he always does, which is sit around. <laughs> Mr. Tubes, of course, is still a little bit camera shy. I do try to catch him anytime I'm out. I'll, I'll try to catch him moving around in the aquarium and it's really neat, especially in the evenings when it kind of gets uh, with the twilight lighting, uh, where the lights get real dim and then that, that other blue light comes on and stuff. They swim all around. All the fish get real active in the evenings and it's neat to see them in that sort of natural cycle. I am starting to get a little bit of algae here and there on the background and stuff, but nothing major yet. It's, it's still kind of normal. Now we move on to the 27 gallon cube, which is uh, not really anything's changed with that. I've added a couple of new little fish, but uh, really it's pretty much the same crowd that was there when I moved everybody back in after I did the floors and all that. Uh, still lots of rummy nose tetras and lots of small fish and that sort of thing. Um, it seems to be doing really well. It seems to be pretty healthy. The plants seem to be doing good. I, I really do need to pull some of these plants out and trim a little bit inside, but it's just so neat looking at it like this. I, I really enjoy it. Uh, one of the new fish I got is this uh, baby pandagara. Uh, there's actually two of these baby pandagaras and they are so adorable. Uh, another fish that I got as a baby is this little uh, bristlenose placo. I think this is a female now that it's grown up a little bit. Doesn't have the bristles on the nose. So it might be a female, but boy, it's, really, really pretty yellow color. I love looking at this thing and just kind of watching it grow. It's, it's been great. Now this next tank is kind of unusual. This is a, this is a little tank that Kerrigan and her friends set up for a band mascot, uh, for marching band. This is Prep. He's a Betta Splendus and, uh, he came home with us over Christmas and just kind of never went back. He could be living out the, the rest of the year in the music room, but I think he gets a little bit better care here at the house. We're gonna, I think we've kind of grown attached to him. I think what we're gonna do is set up a brand new tank for him. Speaking of bettas and tanks, uh, I've very recently given you an update on the face tank, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail about it. Uh, basically, uh, the plants are doing good. I did start to get algae again a little bit. I've had to do a little bit, another treatment of that and uh, might increase the CO2 a little bit and see if I can kind of help with that. But overall, it's looking good. Albert's a really, really beautiful koi beta and I've enjoyed kind of watching him. I, I had a lot of reports of people saying that he'd lose those colors, but it hasn't happened yet. One big thing to tell you about though in this tank is I did change out the light and uh, this is a new, brand new light from Fluval and we're gonna find out all about it in about another week or so. This next tank I've decided to call the crime scene. <laughs> so I've got that skull sitting right there. You might recognize this as Mr. Tube's little grow out tank. Uh, I found some Tetras that I really liked and I put them in here. And uh, I've never had these particular Tetras before, but they're really, really cool looking. Uh, they're fairly common. Uh, a lot of people have these guys. They're, they're pretty common in the industry, but um, 
I like how simple they are though. They got these really neat eyes, these red eyes and these kind of flaggish tails. Uh, you might notice I've also got a little baby Pandagara in this tank too. This tank is kind of played with algae most of the time. And uh, I've done a lot of work to try and pull it out. I thought it was just cause Mr. Tubes had, you know, was creating a lot more waste than uh, the tank could handle. But uh, I don't know, there might be something with the light cycle that I need to work on. I might need to plant some more plants. I definitely need to work on the lights a little bit and get them kind of pitched a little bit towards the back. The lights kind of shine a little bit more in the front than they should, but it's a pretty cool tank. Now, as we move upstairs to the Evo 15 gallon, again, we talked about this recently, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail. I've just flipped the lights on and upset everybody in here. <laughs> I wanted to give you an update that Aptasia problem is gone. The corals that we bought are all doing good and we're anticipating more corals soon. Hergen also has a fluval speck in a room. It, uh, I'm not cleaning this up. <laughs> more on this one later. As we look at the 56 gallon column upstairs, it is basically empty. There might be a Raphael catfish in there somewhere, but uh, he's gonna be impossible to find. Right now, I've got tons and tons of baby rainbows. And the ba I'm growing out some baby rainbows in here and uh, also in a couple of other tanks, but uh, I'm hoping to move eventually all the baby rainbows into this tank and kind of grow them out. Uh, some of the early ones I caught are in this 10 gallon here and they're a little big like I'm trying to I'm waiting for the rainbows of the 56 gallon to get big enough to where the, they can't be eaten by this other size of rainbow and I know that sometimes rainbows of different sizes pick on each other and stuff so not sure what to do about that but I'm hoping to break this 10 gallon down real soon and just get those rainbows out of here. Of course, right next door is the five gallon fluval spec. This is the one I set up as the in the mini gardens video. And of course, those little mini gardens grew out of those things and then took over. The This is Dwarf Sagittarius has just kind of taken over this tank. It has, of course, more baby rainbow fish. I, I have like three baby rainbow fish in here that I cannot catch for the life of me. But also, finally, uh, we've got some BB puffers. I took three BB puffers from the store and I've placed them in here. Uh, they're really, really tiny. Some of them are kind of skinny. A couple of them were a little skinny, but I'm doing my best to fatten them up. Um, normally, I wouldn't say uh, keep three of them in a five gallon like this, but this is a really temporary thing. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, uh, I'm gonna take these over to my sister, at least two of them over to my sister in a different tank. And it'll be a more appropriate setup for these guys. They're so cute. A really, really beautiful little fish. Now, as we look over to this spec, this is a spec I set up a long time ago. It is on the way out. I'm gonna break it down. I need to get the shrimp. I've got some really cool shrimp in there. But I need to break it down. It's had some water issues. Uh, there's a little bit of a leak in there and I can't really figure out where it is. So I'm gonna have to just break it down. As we look over at the little, I think this is like a half gallon tank. I'm not even sure why I keep this going. It's just, I'm just curious to see how it'll do. It's got some shrimp in it and the shrimp actually look really healthy and, and nice. And I just kind of let it grow out a lot of moss and a couple of random things in there. So right here we have the zombie head tank. The plant growth has been kind of lagging lately. I switched it with the light out with the one that I had downstairs and uh, I'm hopeful that that's gonna do better. Right now I've just got some guppy females in here and I've got tons and tons of shrimp. It might be due for a rescape at some point soon. Right next door, of course, I have the Fluval Flex 15 gallon. And the plants in there have been doing, uh, they grow really, really super slow in this tank. So this has been a good low maintenance tank. There's never much to do in here with the plants. It also kind of, has developed a bunch of algae and some stuff that's really not very pretty. I think what I'd love to do is take this tank down and redo it. I really want to rescape it. I might even do a mod with a light, uh, you know, with a brighter light or something like that in there and, and really uh, trick this thing out. So right next to the flex, I have the 10 gallon. I set this up in a video called uh, the simple 10 gallon setup. It's been a long time since this tank got set up. It's been running for a really long time now. 
And my sister's been having a problem with a tank I set up for her and that her cat, it's a rimless tank and there's no lead and the cat keeps kind of messing around in the aquarium. So I think what I'm gonna do is take this tank over and trade it with her. I'm gonna take the rams out. I'm gonna rehome them into another tank. And uh, I might take this whole tank over to her with a couple of puffers in it and uh, swap it out for the tank that she's got. And that'll give me a little bit more space to set up another aquarium. Now right here you see the 55 gallon dirted tank. Uh, this is my first dirted tank. It's been up for about, it's been about two years, maybe three years. I think it's about two years old. Uh, still having hair algae problems in it. I pull a handful of hair algae out of this every time I clean it, but in between those times, it looks really, really good. Uh, I have a lot of fun with this tank. It's full of fish. Uh, it's the kind of thing you can sit and stare at for a long, long time. Uh, I've tried a couple of things to kind of prevent that algae. Like I've started adding frog bit to the top to kind of block out some of the light. And I guess time will tell. I'll let you know if that doesn't has any effect. Now, of course, the next tank is the 20 gallon into the woods tank. This tank is getting way overgrown, especially the Monte Carlo has just kind of gone nuts in here. I've trimmed the moss back a couple of times. Uh, I'm trying to be real, real careful with it so I don't mess up uh, the limbs and branches that I made. Yeah, I'm gonna have to focus on that Monte Carlo soon though. It's really starting to take over. I think if I had to go back and do this again, uh, although I, I'm enjoying the mixed carpet here, but if I had to do it again, I think I'd just stuck with a four leaf clover and uh, you can't tell, but it's actually grown all the way over to the other side. It just gets taller as it enters the Monte Carlo, but uh, I'm so tempted to rip all that stuff out and uh, just let that four leaf clover grow through there. Cause it looks, I think the floor, I think the four leaf clover just looks a little cleaner and stays lower. It, it, it looks more like a foresty ground and doesn't just like cover everything in this ocean of greenness. Now here's another tank we talked about just recently, the steampunk tank. Uh, it's doing really good since I did my little renovations to it. Uh, I did add another peacock gudgeon. Uh, they seem to be really happy in there. I pulled that pesky inler in there that was bugging everybody. But now I have four peacock gudgeons in here. Uh, they're all nice, fat and happy. I'm not seeing a lot of chasing or anything. I've added some tubes kind of here and there and I'm hoping that maybe I'll see some breeding behavior out of these guys. That'd be pretty neat. Uh, the tank is doing great. The plants have snapped back on top here. Uh, the crypt is growing really well. The fern is starting to grow. Some of it melted away, but overall it's starting to grow back and stuff. And uh, I'm sure it'll be overgrown in here soon, but for now it looks really, really neat. Now, as we move down the line, you'll see, uh, I think it's our last aquarium in this series. So it's the Fluval Edge 12 gallon. And I've got some fish in here. I'm not sure if I've told you about these before. I've got some Serpe Tetras. A fish store was going out of business and I got these really, really cheap. And I quarantined them for a while and I've been keeping them in here. I've never had these fish before. They're really neat. They're super aggressive when they eat it. They're like little, little, red sharks when they go to eat it. But this tank has been kind of neat. It's not my favorite aquarium, but uh, it is a pretty fun aquarium to keep. Yeah. And that's all the tanks. It's a lot to take care of. Uh, most of my tanks are really low maintenance, so it's not a huge deal. But there's a lot of them. So there'll probably be some big changes. I mean, this lineup especially is going to change uh, a, a lot over the next couple of months. So hopefully by this summer, we'll have something new to look at over this direction. All right, so that brings us to the product updates and uh, basically talking about some products that maybe I, I didn't like after I used for a period of time. I've, I went through it, I thought hard about this stuff because for the most part, I, I don't buy stuff that I know will be bad. And of course, no one would intentionally buy uh, stuff that they know is bad. I did, however, occasionally buy some stuff that was a little bit cheaper or a little bit uh, kitschy just to see, you know, just to see what it was like. There's definitely a lot of times where you get what you pay for with, uh, with equipment, especially electronics and stuff. And, and then sometimes, sometimes it works out and you can, uh, you can get something inexpensive that works almost as well. 
With that being said, I'm, I'm not basing these opinions on overall, uh, it, these opinions are based on kind of overall ease of use and quality and not so much the price and the price value for, for what you get. All right, number one on my list was kind of an old video, but I did one for Aquion Modular Light. It was a 48 inch light and you could buy separate tubes to put it in. Uh, this one's kind of old and I, I don't see them around that much anymore, but you should definitely avoid them. <laughs> I actually ended up with two of those. Uh, I got another one in an aquarium. Somebody uh, was getting rid of a 55 and they happened to have that too. Anyway, that thing did the same thing mine did, which, which was after a while it just started flickering and uh, parts of the lamps weren't coming on and it it got bad. Like I didn't have mine directly over water or any anywhere where water could really get in, and it still seemed to have a problem with moisture building up inside one of the tubes, and it just started flickering and acting awful. Uh, I was told that Aquion knows about that problem, and you could go and mail off for another power plug that will fix that issue. And back then, LEDs were kind of new, but you know, really, overall, it was a terrible product. It didn't grow plants at all, and it barely just lit up the aquarium. So back on lights, the light that I put on the Steampunk Aquarium, the original light that I had on the Steampunk Aquarium, that light ended up being pretty awful too. That's a light I picked mostly because it fit exactly into what I needed it to do for this very unique tank. Uh, just the mounting mechanism for it was perfect for what I needed to do, so I went ahead and picked it up. Took a chance on it. It was a clearance item anyway. Uh, it did, in fact, grow plants, even though it was a little bit warmer than I normally would like. But it only lasted a few months, and then ultimately I had to replace it with another lamp. And the lamp I have on there now is really, really good. I'm not getting into this really thing again. <laughs> of course, the lamp I replaced it with is working really great, so I'm pretty happy with it as a replacement. Okay, if we jump over to stuff I like uh, in the good category, I like the Kessel lights. I get a lot of crap about liking the expensive lights and stuff, but sue me, I think they're really cool. <laughs> I especially, especially like to shout out the Amazon Sun, one of the early ones. Uh, that's the one that's been on my 27 gallon cube. It's been running quite a lot for the past several years and uh, has not seemed any dimmer. Uh, it, it seems to be working fine. The fan hasn't gotten really loud over time or anything like that. It's a really decent light, and uh, it's a workhorse. I love it. Another light I can't talk enough about is the Phoenix Planted Plus. Uh, that's just one I picked up off Amazon, and I love this light. It, it grows plants really great on the 20-gallon with CO2. I've got it in on the 56-gallon with no CO2. It, I can't believe that's the exact same light lighting those two different tanks. It's very different tanks. It's one of those that's not super cheap, but it's not super expensive either. It's right there in that sweet spot in the middle. Uh, it's perfect for a 20 long. If you want some pretty bright lights, some pretty high light on a, like a 20 gallon, that's what I definitely recommend. Or if you want to do low light on a little bit deeper tank, still, it's a great light. I'd also like to shout out the floodlights. Uh, I've been using the floodlights on the 55 gallon over here in conjunction with it. I tell you what. Guys, it's a crazy show up there. I've got my DIY light bar. I've got the Stingray, Phoenix Stingray, and three of those spotlights on there. I think the floodlights are doing great. Uh, my DIY light bar is doing great. It grows plants like wherever I put it, plants grow. But the Phoenix Stingray is weak. That is a weak light. Now, if you have a really shallow tank or something like that, maybe it would work better, but I would say no more than a low light or just to, to light up your fish or something like that, or very low light plants uh, for that one. That's not a very bright light at all. And that's the point where the list gets kind of arbitrary, you know. Some people uh, don't need to grow plants, so the stingray will work fine. Or, or some people don't mind the floodlights and they want to put that stuff, you know, mount those things under their hood. They don't mind if they get a little warm or anything like that. Uh, and some people like the Kessels and they like the little special features that they can do. I'm not telling you what to think about any of these products. I want to stress that enough. This is just my personal opinion. You can take it or leave it. I don't care. That being said, let's move into some filters and, and probably a controversial topic. One product that I reviewed was the Penguin 200. It's a hang on the back filter. It's sort of like the Penguin 350 cut in half. I was a long time user of the Penguin 350s. 
I thought that they worked really, really well. They're very cheap. Uh, you could replace the, the stuff that they come with that you'd have to buy, the replacement cartridges and stuff. I would replace that with sponges. I'd put sponges in there and a reusable media and stuff like that. And uh, they were a really cheap filter to run. It was also really neat if you started a new tank to pass those bio wheels around to kind of help jumpstart the biological material. So I thought it'd be cool to get uh, the 200, which is the same size wheel as half of the 350, you know, one of the wheels in the, in the Penguin 350. So I knew I could easily take that out, stick it in there, and uh, have an instant cycle. But the fact is, when I plugged it in and got it running, it was loud. Uh, it was kind of unreliable. That wheel seemed to stop more than, more than they usually do. Sometimes they get dirty and they don't run right, but... Uh, my 350s pretty much ran. Uh, one of them would run consistently, both of them all the time. The other one seemed like one side would get st stuck or something like that. Anyway, overall the 350s I liked, but the 200 was terrible. It was a terrible product. It just didn't work. Like there were so many things about it that just didn't work. And it was loud too. I didn't enjoy that product at all. And I, I don't think I even like sold it or anything. I think I gave it away. Either gave it away or threw it away. I can't remember. There's another filter I reviewed called the Aqua Duo. It was kind of this unusual filter that had the uh, it had a plant coming out the top. It's just a hang on the back filter with like a little planter in the back where you could put in a piece lily or or something like that. And I actually had that in the ten gallon here before I replaced it with the C2. I felt like that that was a good idea for a product and it was probably all right. But there's there's a lot cheaper ways to do the same thing. I mean, there's a lot of you can you can basically take any hang on the back filter and fill it full of the same material that that thing came with and put a plant in it. I mean, it was neat that it was purpose built for that, but it seemed kind of like a waste of money, like overall. And uh, I didn't really enjoy keeping that filter. I, I gave that filter to a friend of mine and he's using it with a plant in it and stuff and it's still going. So that's just one that wasn't for me, but you know, other people might still enjoy it. Uh, my buddy sure likes it. So now, if we jump over to some filters I like that I've tried for a while, uh, the corner filter, the corner mountain filter is at the top of my list. That is a really, really awesome filter. It's, I thought it would be less stealthy, like I thought I would really notice it in that back corner and stuff, but you really don't because it just sort of turns into this black wall. It seems to me to be very efficient. Uh, I've only cleaned it out twice. Uh, basically, you just check the water level, and if the water level gets kind of low behind there, you know the thing's starting to get clogged. From what I hear, you really only have to rinse it out about once a year, so that's pretty nice. By the time that year comes around, though, I'm going to have so many plants attached to it, it might be kind of a nightmare, so uh, I'll probably pull it out in the next couple of months and just give it a good squeeze. It's definitely the cheapest, the easiest filter, the quietest filter. Uh, I probably will look towards those types of filters for the most part now on. I think every chance I get, I'll probably move towards a filter like that or a filter system like that. I think moving forward, I'm gonna do more and more aquariums like that. I, I love the corner filters and sponge filters and stuff like that. So I wanna to try to make simpler filters that work really well. That's a great candidate. Now for hang on the back filters, I love the Title 55. Uh, that's something I unboxed, I believe, it was around the beginning of last year. So it's about been about a year or so. I've got it running right there, as quiet as a mouse. Uh, my absolute favorite feature, it's got tons of features, okay? Like some of it's really practical, some of it's less practical, but um, my absolute favorite feature that it has is being able to self-prime. I don't have to pour water into the top of it after I do a water change to get the water going again. And now that I have that in that filter, it's making me like, all these other filters a little bit less. I get asked about the C2 all the time too, and it is a great filter, but uh, like I said, you have to prime it, just like the AquaClears, you gotta prime it when you go to fill the tank back up after a water change. That's not a big deal if you have one or two aquariums or maybe even three or four aquariums, but when you're trying to do you know, a whole bunch of water changes in one day, that little extra step to like grab some water that that hasn't had chlorine in it or anything out of another tank and top it off and then make sure it's going. The other thing is with the aqua clears, I always have to take my finger down and, and mess with the impeller. Like I'll pull the impeller out and clean it now and then, but it still like seems to get stuck. Like you'll, you'll,
you'll plug it in and the aqua clear's not going and you, you kind of maybe you'll hear a little hum but but it's not running so you just take that little the lift tube move it out of the way take your finger down there and kind of mess with the impeller a little bit and then vroom it comes on you put the thing back on and then it's running it's really simple and easy to do and just annoying as hell something i never have to do in the title and that's why i like it a little bit better the c2 is it's basically an aqua clear with a couple of different chambers and stuff it's just a little bit different than an aqua clear <laughs> there are a lot of hardcore aqua clear fans out there and, and for good reason because it's overall it's a decent filter and, and it, it's probably a great filter for you. I'm just tired of a couple of these things that I could easily avoid. So if I'm going to do a hang on the back filter in lieu of a corner filter, which won't be often, I'll probably use a Title 55 if the tank's big enough to take it. And that's about it for the bitching and moaning about products because, you know, overall, I don't have a lot of turkeys that I brought home. If you have a specific question about something you've seen me pull out of the box and I didn't discuss, be sure to let me know. You might notice that I didn't mention any aquariums in the like or the dislike. Uh, I've been overall very happy with every aquarium kit that I've received. Like I don't have, I don't have a big problem with any of them that I bought. One of my most popular videos is actually a Fluval Edge six gallon video. A lot of you might have come over from that. That aquarium was bought by my coworker. I actually have it now. It's empty in my garage, but it was bought by my coworker, and it had the old halogen lights uh, that. <laughs> I would put it on my, you know, things I don't like list, but they don't make them anymore. They quickly came up with like new and improved versions of the six gallon lights. So I didn't bother to include it, but that was the only aquarium kit where I was like, oh man, that's, that's a really sucky component. Those old halogen lights that were yellow. They were crazy. He eventually replaced them with like little, you could pull them out and you could replace them with little LED versions, but they didn't end up working very well either. Now the new lights they put on the edges and stuff now I think are awesome. All right guys, so I think next week, don't hold me to it, but I think next week what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to my sister's house and deliver her some puffers. Probably take her this tank to use too, since her cat's a little too inquisitive. And of course we'll find some more great stuff to talk about. So until next time, follow your bliss, keep a clean tank, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye. And so that brings us to uh, products. <laughs> not sure how I'm going to title this. <clears throat> All Aquarium update. And so the light I found. And so that brings us to the. It seems to be really, really, really efficient. There I go again. The hood or something like that. Another people. Uh, and a